Hey guys, Demis here. Wouldn't it be great if you could light and render your Cinema 4D scenes in an easy and understandable way while also getting super realistic results? And all that just by using Cinema's native renderers? That's what we're going to learn today. When it comes to 3D programs, things can get quite complicated really fast. Cinema 4D is no exception, no matter how much easier it is compared to other 3D applications. So whenever we can take a shortcut, of course we'll take it. So forget about having to modify lots of uh, settings for global illumination, ambient occlusion, caustics. You can get all those things for free. Forget also having to modify lights and light settings. You don't have to worry about those as well. So what's the catch? Of course there's always a catch, and in this case it's speed. Your renders, in most of the cases, will be a lot slower, but at the same time you will simplify your workflows and get very realistic results without having to buy and learn an external renderer. So this method won't completely replace the workflows you already know, especially if you're on a tight deadline. But if you have the luxury of time, you will get much better results without too much of a hassle. Let's see what we need in order to make this happen. Our main ingredients are two things. The first one is materials that use only the reflectance channel. Of course, transparent and luminant materials don't need to have the reflectance enabled, but for everything else, we will use reflectance as our base. The other ingredient is luminant surfaces. We will use those to replace the lights in cinema. Let's load up a scene and see how we can set it up the easy way. This is a typical Cinema 4D scene. It uses a white color in the color channel and has an area light on the left side. Without any GI enabled, this is how it renders. Nothing new here. Let's see how we can modify the scene to get some nicer results. Let's first enable the physical renderer and then the progressive renderer so we can have some fast feedback. When I prepare a scene for rendering, I want to start with total darkness. I don't want any auto lights affecting my scene or anything else giving lights to the scene. So I'm going to delete the light we already have in there and also make sure that the default light is disabled. And now we're getting a nice black screen. And that concludes our tutorial. <laughs> I'm joking. Let's modify our material to see how we can get the results we need. We need to get rid of the color channel and use the reflectance channel instead. Let's delete whatever is there and create a new diffuse material. A diffuse material is basically a material that has 100% roughness. So we can achieve that look with almost all of these models, except the legacy specular models. The only difference would be how the diffuse material looks like. Each model has its own look, so you can choose whatever you like most. I'm going to go with the Liberation model. This base layer is basically the equivalent of the color channel. And of course, if we want, we can then stack other things like glossiness on top. We can turn down the specular strength all the way down to zero. We don't need to touch this value ever again. We can leave it at the default value as well, it's just that when using geometry as lights, having the specular channel above zero won't make any difference to our render. The other thing we need to do is to choose a more realistic value for our base color. The pure white is something that doesn't exist in real life, so let's tone it down to something more reasonable. Now, uh, of course, we still cannot see anything in the render because we don't have any lights. Let's see what we can do about that. As I mentioned before, we don't want to deal with cinema's myriad light options. We want to keep things simple. So we'll use geometry to illuminate our scene. I usually go with two different geometries. The first one is a sphere, which represents more of a regular light source, and the other one is a plane, which is basically the equivalent of a softbox for photographers. Let's start with a sphere and assign a luminant material to it. Let's start with 100% luminance, and we can slowly fine tune from there. And as you can see, now we have lights in our scene. Isn't that amazing or what? The beauty with this setup is that we have really simple controls for our lights. Big light means more light in our scene, and small light means less light and harder shadows. And that's all you need to remember. You can also adjust the luminance value. So I can keep my sphere the same size and increase the brightness value to make everything brighter. So to recap, big light means more light in the scene, small light means less light. Add also the luminance value into the mix, and you can do pretty much everything you could do with regular lights, but without all the settings. Now the beauty of this method is that you can implement all the tricks photographers would use in the real world in order to light the scene. As you can see, this side is quite dark. If we want to brighten up this side a bit more, we could either add a light that is not as intense as our main light, or we can have a bounce card. 
this card bounces the light from our light source on the opposite side. To create this bounce card we just create a plane and add a diffuse material to it. In this case we will make the value as white as possible. And now our shadows are a little bit lighter. One thing to keep in mind in order to get cleaner renders faster is to enable the GI area light option in the luminar material settings. It was already enabled in this scene, so let's see the effect on another one. This is with the GI area light option off, and this is with the GI area light option on. As you can see, the difference is quite amazing. We get much cleaner results, much much faster. This though will only get you this far. To eliminate all noise in the scene, you need to adjust some other values as well. If you're using progressive, you should increase the blurriness subdivision value. But since progressive is slower to clean up, you should use the adaptive option. I'm using progressive only when setting up the scene and if I want to finish a render at a specific time, 1, 2 minutes, etc. In the adaptive setting, the main values that will clean up your renders are the shading subdivisions and the blurriness subdivisions. Higher values will give you cleaner results, of course at the expense of render time. If you're using depth of field, then you also need to adjust the sampling subdivisions. If you're not using depth of field, you can turn it all the way down to zero with no effect to your render. Of course, as I mentioned before, this method is going to be costly rendering wise, but this is something you need to weigh while working on your project. Do I need speed or can I afford to wait? Let's see how this scene can be set up for GI. We will switch back to the color channel as our diffuse base layer and we will disable the diffuse layer in the reflectance channel. Now we will enable GI and use QMC as primary method and light mapping as secondary method. Let's hit render and see what kind of results we can get. As you can see, the results are similar. There are some differences here and there, but if you want to save time, there is no denying that the GI method is almost three times faster than the brute force method. So if you want to be physically accurate, you can choose the brute force method, and if you want to save time, you can choose the GI method. In both cases, we get rid of all the settings we need to remember for lights. Other things you can do to increase the speed of the brute force method is to render your scene in low settings and then apply noise reduction to it. So for example, this render is super clean, but this one took much less time to render and we got it cleaned up with noise reduction in post. The image with the noise reduction is a little bit softer, but you save up quite a bit of time and you can always sharpen it afterwards. For still images, I like using Define2, a great plugin from Nick, which also happens to be free. For moving images, you can use other tools like Neat Video. You'll find the links for both of these plugins in the description below. Just to recap, to convert Cinema 4D materials to pure reflectance based materials, you don't need to do anything particularly complex. The only thing you need to remember is that the base diffuse layer will be in the reflectance channel instead of the color channel. So for example, in this wooden material, all we need to do is move the texture from the color channel to a diffuse layer in the reflectance channel. Whatever else you need to add to the material, you just add it as a separate layer in the reflectance channel. With this method, you can achieve great looking results without the need to get an external engine. All you need is already there in cinema, with the added effect of making a procedure such as lighting a scene even simpler. And that's about it for now. If you have any questions about this method, let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you on the next one.